Now, understanding the signs of change, you may have noticed a series of new messages displayed along local highways. The DOT rolled out these attention-grabbing slogans to try and drive home the dangers of drunk and distracted driving. Well, they certainly did not go unnoticed, and some people even asking if they went too far. And tonight, what's behind this new approach to the old problem? Brian Yukono is here now with a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. Typically, when we think of the DOT, roads and bridges come to mind, but there's another big component, and that's safety. The DOT director tells me he's focused not only on making sure the roads are safe, but that you're making safe choices, too. You don't have to drive far to see one of these electronic signs. What's on them is turning a few heads. You've been posting on social media about them from cheer them on, but don't tie one on, celebrating the Patriots, to more controversial saying, wrap your gifts, not your car, around a tree. Did you yourself pass any and go, ooh? Yes. When you saw it lit up like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sitting down with Rhode Island DOT Director Peter Alvidi, I learned his goal is a cultural change, and he's okay if they make you feel uncomfortable. Structural and engineering solutions to this kind of a problem, impaired driving, only cures part of the problem. It deals with people who have already made the decision to get on the highway and drive impaired, and then tries to make the highway itself safer with those people on it. According to the DOT, we lost 19 people on Rhode Island roads from impaired driving in 2015. Consequences the director believes are avoidable and now require a different approach. We don't mean to offend people, but our intent is to make people feel uncomfortable so that that same feeling of discomfort comes about at a point when people are making that decision. He has heard complaints and praise over the holiday season. The phrase, let's fill potholes, not graves, got a lot of attention. It is doing what we wanted it to do. It is conjuring a discussion where no discussion was before. And part of solving this problem, uh, just like any other problem, is admitting as a society or as a state that the problem is, exists. And we begin to formulate a solution to it over time. We asked if the signs are creating a distraction, though. Alvidi explains his office continues working to make concise messages that are outside the traditional don't drink and drive campaigns. And these signs are only the beginning of a 10 year program now with a goal of zero distracted or impaired driving deaths. Coming up all new at six, we're breaking down that plan and where the money's coming from for it. I'm Brian Nicono, Eyewitness News. Now, understanding the signs of change. At 5, we sat down with the director of the DOT to talk about the agency's new attention-grabbing messages along state highways. New at 6, the long-term plan for this campaign against drunk and distracted driving and how it's being paid for. Brian Yukono is here with the story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. Starting a dialogue, that's the number one goal of the DOT director, and so many of you have been talking about some of the messages on these signs. We're learning these are only the beginning. Some funny, some sports related, others just leaving you feeling unsettled. All of them focused on putting an end to impaired or distracted driving. If only one life is spared as a result of somebody being uncomfortable because they saw one of our signs and felt uncomfortable when they read it, um, then we're accomplishing what we want to do. But saving just one life isn't enough. The director's goal in 10 years is that no lives are lost from distracted or impaired driving. Doing that requires a culture change. These message signs, anyone that may be a bit uncomfortable seeing them, is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how this plan will evolve over the next 10 years. Through the Roadworks program, there is money earmarked for safety. Traditionally, it goes toward engineering, like the wrong way driver detection system. Now, about 75% of that money is being shifted to education, social programs, legislation, all to be tracked and monitored for results. Each will have a cumulative effect on people making those decisions until everybody is making the right decision. We're putting in place performance measures so that we can continually measure the performance and effect of the various components that we're implementing. The director says the response to the messages has been mixed, but he finds even the negative comments a win because people are talking about a topic that has gone unaddressed for too long. Because they deal with the reality that uh, that decision that you're making when you get in a car or you get in a vehicle and you drive impaired, 
will affect the lives of many, many other people. I expect to see new messages around the holidays and times of the year when impaired driving typically increases. Also expect a new message starting tomorrow as so many of you will be cheering on the Pats through the weekend. I'm Brian Yacono, Eyewitness News.